In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can quickly create an audio visualizer animation with geometry nodes in Blender. This is actually surprisingly easy. Let me show you. Alright, so first of all, I want to show you how we can bring an audio file into Blender. And for this, we're gonna open up a new window and switch this to the video sequencer. Then we can simply take the audio file and just drag and drop it in here. And I also want to make sure that it starts on the first frame. Then with the clip still selected, press N to open up the side panel and enable display waveform. So we get a visual representation of the waveform directly on our audio strip. Now let's make this window a bit smaller again. And you can use this handle over here to scale the waveform and make it bigger. Alright, so now if I press the space bar to play the animation, you can hear the audio track. However, if I scrub through the timeline, you cannot hear anything. We can change this if we go down here to playback and enable audio scrubbing. However, for this tutorial, I'm gonna disable this, otherwise it's gonna be quite annoying. Okay, so now we can actually start working on the visualizer. For this, press Shift A and under Mesh, add in a new plane. We're gonna work with geometry nodes, so let's open up a new window and then switch this to the geometry node editor. With the plane selected, let's create a new geometry node setup. And since we don't actually need the plane itself, we can simply delete the group input node. Instead, we want to add in a bunch of cubes that we can distribute along the y-axis. For this, we first need a mesh line. So let's press Shift A and on the mesh primitives, add in the mesh line node. And let's connect this to the output so we can see it in the viewport. Currently, this is just going straight up. Uh, so let's change this from offset to endpoints and set the start location to minus one on the y-axis and the end location to plus one on the y-axis. So now we can see this line in the viewport. And since we have this set to a count of 10, we have 10 individual vertices along this line. And on each vertex, we're now gonna add in a cube that we can then scale on the set axis. To do so, we need an instance on points node that we can add between the mesh line and the group output. And then let's also add in a mesh primitive cube node and plug this into the instance. So now you can see we have 10 individual cubes. However, they are a lot too big. So let's just scale them down so they fit next to each other. And we can now use the scale on the instance on points node to scale them up on the set axis. However, I don't want all of them to have the same height. So instead, let's bring in a combine XYZ node and connect this up to the scale. Now, first of all, let's bring all the values back to one. And since we don't want to have the same value for the set axis on each cube, we're gonna use a noise texture instead. Let's plug the factor into the set value. And now you can see that each cube has a different height. However, they are way too small currently. So let's fix this with a map range node. And here we can basically define a range between which those values should be. So in this case, I want to set the minimum scale to one and the maximum to let's say 15. So now you can see that each of those cubes has a different scale and they are a lot bigger. However, I want to add a bit more contrast between them. So for this, let's bring up the from min value to 0.3 or 0.4 and uh, from max to let's say 0.7. So now we have a bit more difference between the smallest and the biggest cubes. And in order to animate this, we're gonna change the noise texture from 3D to 4D, which gives us this W value that we can now use to add variation. And for our visualizer, we basically want to take this W value and drive it with the waveform of our audio strip so we get a nice audio visualizer. To do so, let's add in a value node and connect this up to the W input. Now to make this value use our audio, let's go back to the first frame and while hovering over this value, press I to inset a keyframe. 
This keyframe should now appear down here in the timeline. And if you can't see the keyframe, make sure that you have both the object and the value node selected. And now you should see the keyframe down here. Then let's switch the timeline to the graph editor. And now make sure that you are on the first frame and that our audio strip also starts on frame one. Then with the keyframe still selected, go to key and choose bake sound to F curve. This opens up the file browser where we can select our audio file and choose bake sound to F curve. And you can now see that this value changes depending on the waveform. So if I scrub through here, you can see that our audio visualizer is now animated. However, I think this is a bit too strong. So let's add in a math note, add it in after the value. And I want to change it from add to multiply and bring this down to a factor of 0.1. So now let's take a look at this again. And I think this looks a lot better now. That's basically everything we need to do to build a simple audio visualizer in Blender. Now, of course, this is just a very basic example and you can go a lot further with this. You could use this value to drive a lot of other stuff in the geometry node setup and make this effect even bigger. But for now, there's just one more thing that I want to show you, which is how we can add materials to this object. If you go to the material preview and we add in a material to our object and then let's just make this completely red, you can see that nothing changes on our object. To fix this, go to the geometry node setup and at the very end of the node tree, add in a set material node. Here we can now select the material that we just created and you can see now the material is working. And here is the complete node setup. If you love Blender, you'll also love Blender Kit. Blender Kit is a huge library with more than 20,000 high quality assets for Blender. This includes 3D models, materials, HDRIs and brushes. I've actually used their models for lots of my own projects. Most of the assets are completely free to download and use. But if you want to buy the full plan, you can get a 10% discount with the link in the video description. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you found it interesting, you might also like the other Blender tutorials on this channel. I am Nick, see you in the next one.